Um, call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this uh, at, uh, November the 12th, 2019, approximately 5 uh, p.m. I want to ask Justin Cowan to lead us in a prayer and a place to flag. We bow our head. Uh, Lord, as always, we thank you for uh, all the blessings that you've bestowed upon all of us. Uh, we ask that your wisdom would guide our decisions here today and, and help us, Lord, to listen with understanding so that we may serve the public well. Uh, it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, gentlemen, before you have the minutes of the October 15th meeting, uh, we need a motion to approve. So motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Are th is there any discussion, questions, corrections, or additions? <laughs> any corrections or adi additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Before you, you have the bills, times, payments, and transfers, including a late list. I make a motion to accept. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Sam Small. Any questions? Any questions on the bills, payments, transfers, including the late list? Any questions? Be none, go ahead and do the roll call. Johnston? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Um, you have the Treasurer's October 2019 financial statement. Uh, motion we acknowledge. Motion by Sam Small? Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Uh, any discussion or questions for Ann? Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Now we have our county clerk. <laughs> okay. No, you can approve the financial if you want to, but I have the budget intended to. Okay, okay. Uh, we have a uh, financial report from the clerk to. Uh, uh, motion, motion by Joe Barnes. Okay. Second by Sam Small. Any discussion or questions for Bess? Being none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay, tell us about your budget amendment. I think it's kind of good news, isn't it? Yeah. Well, okay. it's after left you a copy. Unless you're going to go transfer a deed in the next right. few years. Yes, and you can see uh, I just had to uh, underestimate it. Budget, 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 I raised it to $5 That was on the report, but I believe on the amendment we actually put. Yeah. No, it was. It was. But $4,972. Okay, that's your expenses, okay. $202, and we raised it to $5,175,000. Here you go. <laughs> well, I'll make a motion to accept the amendment. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. <laughs> So we'll just let you know, uh, in 2020, there will be a fee increase on the recording department. Uh, I'll see a 
Court will love it. Yeah. I haven't really had time to sit down and figure uh, exactly how much it and, and the law says best gets keep some of it. <laughs> it does. I think. I haven't got to. Yeah, I believe so. Don't do all that. Have you looked at it really good? I think so. Yeah, so I mean, anyway. to use in the office. Anyway. Yeah. But uh, I think you'll be thrilled with it. And you said it's definitely a plus for the county. Okay. A motion second. Any more discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Post like sign. Motion carries. They're not here. I don't think there is. Anybody from the hospital board here to make a presentation? I don't see anybody, but it was on the agenda, so I asked. So, let's go on. Charlie and, and uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, Ann. We got to do a second reading of Budget <coughs> Amendment 20 20 4. That's the ordinance. So, so it's this motion by Larry well, Cam. Second. second by oh, yeah. Larry Murphy. <coughs> Larry Cam, Larry Murphy. Any discussion? That's at her return. Any discussion? Okay, yeah. <laughs> What is Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. That motion carries. <laughs> now then, yeah, Charlie, you're up again. We're ready for the second reading of our maintenance ordinance that you did the first reading of uh, last time. No changes have been made. No changes have been made. So many motions. Have a motion by Sam Small, second yeah. by, by Larry. I, I want to. I want to. Uh, we got a second. Yeah. Okay, we got a count. Larry, Larry Cam did second. What about what we talked about? On I was I. We have as far as the junk vehicles. Did you junk find out anything when you called about the, the junk vehicles? Follows our state classification. There's a state permit that they have to give for junk vehicles. Uh, so the state has been made aware of the situation. Of that. But we're saying if, if there is a business with a junk vehicle, they have to be so far off the road, and it has to be out of sight. That does not. It, that is not this. It's, it's not in that. Yeah. But I'm just saying. But what I want to make sure before we, I, I go ahead and vote on that there is a law. Covering. Yes, there is a law out there under the state guidelines under the KRS for junk a junkyard it has to meet certain criteria. Yeah. I cannot tell you every And right this is actually going to be after the fence is done and way off of the road, since we all know which one we're talking about. Yeah. It's going to be not a junkyard. It's going to be an impound where you tow in a vehicle and you have to store it until the insurance company or the owner claims it. If not, then it goes to the junkyard. Yeah. And, and I know that David talked to the guy, and the guy said, what's yes, going to happen. And that's, I, I hope that's great. But I just want to make sure that we are covered and there is something that will address that later on. If yeah, there is state law. Same thing happened but it is state up in Larry County's yeah. district, aisle 54. A gentleman had a bunch of junk cars laid out. Yeah. The state came in. When they got done, they wound up moving 250, almost 300 cars yeah. and had to meet certain guidelines. It's my understanding, Charlie, you got to be at least 500 feet off without a fence. And if you're near the highway, it has to be, it has to be fenced in. And now, whether it's, it's certain criteria, yeah, so, yeah, whether uh, it's solid fence or not, I, I, I don't will know. You, will you, I know you call it, it would, I just want eventually somebody, I tried to look it up the other day, if somebody would e text me or email me that, that KRS. These guys are going to be up here this week, mm -hmm. the state permitting people to visit that location. Okay. And I'll try to call them tomorrow and see if I can meet up with them before they do that and get all the guidelines. There's nothing against this business. I just want to make sure we're following because a lot of people are complaining. Yeah. I'll agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine. Okay, roll call. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Um, that motion carries. Uh, Justin, you're up with okay. the RTP contracts. Yeah, uh, OCEDA bid out contracts for two different projects that relate to the same type of overall one project. It was under one bid. One bid, yeah. and there was only one bid received. Uh, they were up, they were uh, uh, properly advertised, from my understanding, in talking to Oceda. The only bid received was uh, from a, uh, a, a Ross Construction, and then a different, yeah. 
So OCEDA approved that bid. However, we think it's probably best since there are going to be contractual obligations between us and this uh, company that's going to be installing uh, the ramp, uh, the dams or the ramps, whatever they may be installing. Access. Yes, access. Um, that it also be approved by the court uh, with the judge to sign the contract. And the, the contract would be what we've been normally doing, which is, you know, they, have, they indemnify us, uh, have insurance, and, and those normal contractual terms that we've been putting in them. This is the RTP grant that was received or approved in 2017. Right. I think it was late 2017, early 2018. It's been going on for a while. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is just, yeah. um, it's just yeah. taking a long time to get all of the, yeah. the it's, due uh, diligence done for the sites and everything. And then we finally got the nailed down and then had to yeah. figure out how to construct them. Yeah. Yeah. Since. Justin had said that you know how he much was to be a it was around I don't have the exact numbers around a hundred thousand for the four we're gonna do pre you need a motion to that effect, but yes please have, so. have a one of them will be in kind of labor have a labor. motion Blair County authorizing the judge to sign those contracts uh, do I have a second 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 by Jason Bullock <laughs> and that was all done by the grant yes that we already had second. Just you agree that we already had in the matching funds we already agreed. Right. Yeah, just so the public realizes it's that we're not, not working. Yeah, this is not this new. Is, this is nothing new. Right. But the the uh, motion is to accept the bid with the judge to execute the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, assuming that they uh, sign the contract that we provide. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and roll call. Johnston? Yes. Kim? Yes. Morphe? Yes. Small. Yes. 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 Barnes? Yes. Does Kai not vote? Do you have the contact for your son? Or do you still have it? They float, don't they? Yes. You got it. I will have to. Oh, wait a minute. Two of them. Yeah. Me sign her hand oh, right here so you know rise. Yeah, and then sense. give them to Joey after you know rise. Mm. We have them, Joe. They're signed. They're signed, Jody. You can get them. Okay. They will be in a minute, then. I'll need your signature and signature, and then I need to make a copy and I'll send it out to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Right under the judge. If you sign these, th there's three total. There's two. two, okay. I signed three times. What was the third thing? <laughs> the first one was the maintenance ordinance. Oh, okay, okay, good. Do you want to take this down? Yeah, I can get it tomorrow. Be careful, don't step backwards here right on the edge of the stage. <laughs> okay, and when you get down there and fix it, recognize you talk. As soon as you get to the microphone. Okay. So I was in this meeting. I know I Are you up? Chris, okay. Go ahead. Yes. Sure. You're you're up. Uh, you're go ahead. Recognize Jody. So you all had asked me at the last fiscal court meeting to do a uh, presentation of the websites, kind of demonstrating what ours looks like compared to some examples of the websites done by Golden Shovel. So this is our website. Most of you all have probably seen it, but. If you look down it, if you're looking from a site selector or an industry looking to expand into an area, there's nothing that kind of tells you 
where you need to start. If I was in, if I was a site selector, I would probably, if I even bothered, I might click on, and I got to this website, let's just assume I got here first of all, I might click on commercial property. That, that is really difficult to keep updated. We don't know what all properties are available all the time, and when we do, like I said, it's, it's a lot of back-end work uh, in the system coding to even list it on there. So there's nothing that tells us all about what workforce is available, what target industries we're looking for. I mean, the list goes on and on as to why just looking at this compared to the other websites, you can see on the front end why there's an issue, not just cosmetically, but functionally. The first example of uh, one of the websites that, I, that they had listed was the One East Kentucky, which is an Eastern Kentucky website. If you scroll down, Miranda, you can see that immediately they have the buttons that you need for site selection, properties, target sector, so they're telling you what target industries they're looking for and why, um, education and training that's in the area, and how that can benefit the, the businesses that are coming in. Um, and, I mean, you can kind of look through that, but that's one of the um, links that I gave you guys last, last month. But this is one of the websites. You can go to the next one, Miranda. I'll just run through these quickly just so you can see the difference. Um, so tourism is listed there and the chamber is listed there. But if you scroll down, you'll see again that they have target sectors, the available properties, workforce data, workforce resources. The list goes on and on. Um, then they're going to have the demographics and profiles and things that a, an industry would be looking for, the functional maps, I mean, <coughs> on to the next one. And this one's Northeast Kentucky. I just have them send me only the Kentucky ones that they did because the other ones that they did were large cities and it really is hard to compare us to like a Washington DC economic development website. Um, again, you have clear area where you can go for site selection. Now, what I like about this one is that they did the opportunity zones. So I don't know if you all know much about opportunity zones, but most of Hartford and Beaver Dam is an opportunity zone. Huge tax incentives, uh, federal tax incentives and state tax incentives for an industry to, or not necessarily an industry, but for individual investors to invest in an opportunity zone. Um, we haven't marketed that very well, but we are um, in an opportunity zone, including our industrial park, so it is an opportunity for us to attract business and investors that way. Um, so our website should do that as well, and could. So these are three examples. I mean, just for me looking at them, I can tell, uh, you know, why we would need that. But to articulate that to you all, just the back-end data, I gave you a printout of that. Um, with these websites and with the, the yearly maintenance of it, we get a tracking, a real-time tracking of all the businesses that uh, come to our site, what they're looking at while they're there, the contact information for them, the industries that they're with. Um, we get reports, leads, all of that right there on our own website. So whoever visits our website and what they're looking for, if they're looking for property, if they're looking for expansion, we're going to have all that data available to us at all times. So we don't have to, in other words, just go competing with whatever industries send RFIs to the state or TBA. We can go directly to those companies that we are interested in attracting to Ohio County and contact them directly. <coughs> Also got some um, some other additional quotes. Two of them I just got, or one of them I just got today. The other one I got yesterday. Um, I didn't include that here, but they are um, more than this one. So the, the first quote was twenty five thousand, with uh, a yearly maintenance of sixty one hundred, and the second one was twenty two thousand. They didn't list any updates or yearly uh, maintenance whatsoever, and no back end data on either. <coughs> That was the new one she got, she said, 22 and 25. And specifically Golden Shovel, um, 
even if they cost more, which they aren't so far, they're the lowest <coughs> um, that I've seen, but even if they costed more, they only do economic development websites, and they're the one that the cabinet has recommended. I know them personally. I would rather do them even if they cost more, but they have been the lowest um, cost so far. How much were they? It was 19000 and then a yearly rate? maintenance of, I think it was 40, 41 or 40, I don't remember the exact number for the yearly maintenance. And we also get an updated website every three years with them. Neither one of the other quotes would do that. So they just did the website and then they did the, the maintenance and upkeep for the additional fee of 6100 but no website for website update um, like this one. So what was the yearly maintenance on the other job? It was four, it was forty four thousand forty three. Forty three. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, it's ongoing with all this with all this data that we need that we need and it's the maintenance of it and it's every three years for the website. So the one that's twenty two is it gonna get to a point where a certain where they're gonna want to revamp it completely? They'll revamp it completely every three years. Every three years. A full um, update every three years. Joe, to give us some examples of what you're talking about updating, is that with new businesses coming about and and getting th those particular CEOs or companies? It could be new videos. It could be new workforce data. It could be new properties available. It could be new utility capacities. Anything that we need updated on it, it's a constant and continuous flow. So, can we update properties? you know all the time like mm -hmm. when we have properties available or do we yeah. have to wait for the three years no we can and it'll be much easier because we'll just send them the pictures and the information and they'll do everything else we don't have to sit there and like try to build a website <laughs> who will be privileged to the information on who just don't see it on who what who visits the website and the you yeah. mean the the data who gets the data from that yeah, we'll get, OCEDA gets the data. Um, and anybody we assign to be the administrators, we can we can let anybody see that information that we would want them to see. But we wouldn't want very many people to see that information. Yeah, it would be um, something we want to keep under wraps as much as possible, unless and until we had a project announced. And that, that particular website will keep up the amount of uh hits on the website itself. Yeah, so in this little, these little two pages, if you uh, look at the bottom of the first page, you can see what the data system will look like for us. So it will tell us, you know, that this company visited our page at, on this day at this time. And if you look at the top, it'll say visitor list. That's going to give us the contact information for the actual people who uh, look at our website or, or the company leadership that looks at the website, what they were looking for. Um, and you know, any, any other data that would be relevant to lead generation uh, that they could collect from that website visit, they would. Would OCEDA follow up with that to, uh, if they've hit it several times? Would they follow up with a, a yes. letter to them or uh, some kind no, of correspondence with them? Follow, we'd probably follow up with a phone call. Um, it, it, it would depend. If it was somebody who uh, was from an aerospace manufacturing company and, uh, you know, they were digging around on properties, then we know that they're looking for property to expand most likely or they're thinking about it anyway so we would probably you know it, it would be a different strategy depending on what size company it is where they're located um, that sort of thing but we would probably just give them a day or so and if they didn't contact us we would contact them we don't want to harass them just want to keep ourselves in the forefront of their mind certain say, persistence hey, if we can sit down with you and talk to you about what we have to offer here yeah. um, you know let us know Sometimes persistence does make a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, so is, this, is this where you're kind of thinking that you're going to send the uh, EBA the money that you're going to use for marketing? Uh, on the website? Yes. Yeah. Part of it, yes. There's two different things that I want to do. One of them would be uh, the ceiling and crack seal that we do. That's a good one. Do what? The ceiling and crack seal. That's a good. We do. That's a good example of that persistence. Some of the mm -hmm. people want to put it in. Higher paying jobs that we're yeah. losing in the yeah, county. Yeah, that's true. Um, and have lost. 
then um, we're going to have to do those Start things. Yourself, and, uh, uh, persistence and think that it's the, 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 the money. Be yeah. announcing a project of bluegrass crosses. There's no reason why we couldn't. But the cost of those two things together is going to be more than what I have. So um, you know, a vision is a vision unless it's without funding and then it's a hallucination. And I do a lot of hallucinating, so I would like to uh, see that come to fruition. And in order to do that, you know, I, and we could talk about some other avenues to get that money, but I would rather talk to you all about that in a closed session for legal reasons. Well, I didn't know if you was, if you was thinking of doing the website this year and then next year with the TVA money, maybe doing the other. Can't do that with the TVA money. You can't do it. No. So you can only use the TVA money for the website? Yes. Okay. But that would be all of the TVA money. Right. And then we would have zero dollars for anything else. So, it, you know, we get what so that's why I was hoping for a partnership with the fiscal court. Um, so what are you guys and what are you asking for? You want money. Well, I didn't ask for anything in, in particular. Right. Just the cost is nineteen thousand. Um, the yearly maintenance we will be able to keep up with the <coughs> budget going forward, but the cost initially is nineteen thousand. So I don't know what you all want to contribute or can contribute, but that, that's what it is. I like to do that for our permanent reserves. What was the uh, the other uh, marketing? No, well, the site collector visits that we do, of course, and if we do get strong lead generation, we're this going to need the money to actually go and sit down and meet. And then after that, they do the money for the buy and they take care of it. Right. To do that, right. Um, because we can generate leads all day long, sure. if we can't right. follow through with them, then it's not going to do any good. Well, Jody, this will be a one-time investment for us at the nineteen thousand something. And what you're saying is, from henceforward, you'll you'll you guys yeah. will absorb the. Six thousand or five or six thousand. What he was talking about the maintenance and update. So how much was you kind of looking at using with the TVA money? Using with the TVA money? Yeah. Zero, Joe. <laughs> yeah. No, we we would love. I would I would love to see us go ahead and take care of the initial forum, and then sort of like here here I it is. I love that too. I love that idea. Um, no, you, I'm just leaving that to you all. I'll just. There's the information. And I would love to, too, because that is, I mean, let's face it, economic development is the most important thing we could be pushing right now. Now, here's the question. Where, are we at? Where is that coming from? Yeah, it's come from reserves. And, and I know we don't have unlimited reserves, but, mm -hmm. but, but, but to think about it, whatever we get done through OCDA, economic development, brings more into occupational tax, so it's like, a, it's like an investment. Yeah, I was kind of thinking we could do the TVA money and then... When you get to the other stuff you want to do, we can look at it. Now, because you know you want to get the website going. Yeah, the website to me is number one priority. Um, but the you, we can't use the TA funds for any consulting fees. So well, but the county could help you with that. That might be on down the road, but we don't have much reserves we got left. Right, and so but we don't again, get us, we, so we don't get ourselves in a bind, you know. Yeah, and again, um, I can use some of the TA money for it, but. Um, but it was zero on her. You would zero it out, yeah, because zero on her funding. <laughs> okay. So what it, would be, it would be a really, especially the start. I mean, we're we're just starting the fiscal year, so it would be tough to get through the year and be able to accomplish anything at zero for Are y'all not getting enough uh, money from the interest and stuff that you've loaned out to pay this? No, that's never going to. I mean, you know, we, we don't have enough money in a revolving loan fund for the interest to support economic development it's a I don't know how much but that goes back into the revolving loan fund anyway it's yeah. what a revolving loan fund is I mean it, it revolves itself it doesn't I don't get I mean we don't get to use any of that money for other initiatives but but that being said I, I mean I, again I would love to talk to you guys about some of that stuff in a closed session because some of it pertains to legal things that I would want to so every time y'all need money, you're going to be coming to the court, and you can't use the money that you've already got? No, no. I have, I mean, we have a budget that's for operations and things like that, aside from the revolving loan fund. This is just, I have $20,000 for marketing, and the website design is $19,000. So if I did that on my own, my budget for marketing for the year yeah. is gone. And we need that. 
I mean, and marketing is the only, I mean, that's what economic development is. you got to market your community. No, I don't think we're ready for it. I know, but that's for something else. I don't, I know I don't that, think but so. We got it. Anyway. Oh, see, there. we've got to talk about that more. Uh, well, what's a pleasure? I would love to do it. I, I put the word out there that I'd love to take care of this for them, and then maybe they could use what their money they got for marketing and try to bring more into occupational tax. So, well, all well, of us. What, I mean, that's what I'm hoping that it does. That's, I mean, I think it's an investment for us, um, us as a county, not OCD, just specifically, but us as a county and. You know, the, the end game is to create jobs that are yes. high paying and, and help us to build the middle class and bring in more tax. I would uh, probably uh, go along with it, but uh, as all of us up here on the court know that we're having less revenues coming in than we have in the past, but if we're going to do it, we need to do it now, and then henceforward it may be something we might not be able to accommodate on, so I'm not, I'm, I'm with the judge. I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Uh, will you so move? Yeah. Move motion Larry Cowan to uh, uh, fund uh, fund the, the uh, p uh, web page of 19,000 for OCDA and fund it f from reserves. And uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Sam Small. Roll call. And I wish you all the best, Jody, because we certainly do need some economic yeah. development in the county. Could yeah. you bring yeah. us a? Uh, I'm gonna put Report from all the jobs that's being created and some of the pay, how much they pay. Uh, I've asked for this before and I still haven't got it. Uh, you mean by OCDA directly or? Right, through OCDA that they're supposed to be I'm not create. sure that it's been tracked, but I can look. Um, I, can, I can tell you the ones that I do know. Um, and another thing is I don't know if I should in an open court meeting tell what those salaries are but again we can no i said contract. bring it to us we yeah. uh to the court yeah. i can dig up what i do now yeah. should have it all on record how many are you jobs talking about should. are you I talking about just the uh but i'll, I'll make sure that from, we do from now on directly i asked for it because they're just yeah. now one time chase did bring us some yeah. numbers and well i'd tell you any any growth in the county would have came would have been attributed to that so and then since it's so hard to say exactly, I would say growth in the county would be what he's asking for. Well, in, any difference in your occupational tax since OCDA has been created is technically how economic development is measured. But I know what you're saying, direct contact with OCDA and the jobs that mm -hmm. created from right. direct contact and what those wages are. And um, I haven't seen a, a running list of that, but I can create what I do know if I don't have one of those but on my computer. And I can ask Chase if he If has you can do this, this, try to get for the December meeting. I'll get as, as much information as I can. This court has given OC to quite a bit of money. Yeah. Well, um, and, and most of that money, I think, that you're talking about is in the revolving loan fund, correct? Yes. So, uh, and that's another thing that we can discuss moving forward, but it's most there. of it isn't just used, you know, as operations funds for OCDA. Most of it's what? Not used for operations funding for OCDA. Most of it's in the revolving loan fund. Yeah, yeah but y'all should have a record when you give it to these companies, we the jobs that, that they create and how much they pay. We have a record of the ones that They do from the revolving loan. Yeah. yeah. But you're talking about, I thought you meant everything that had grown yeah. that OC that touched. OC that has given money to. Okay. okay. And From the jobs. Oh, revolving I, loan firm. Okay. Right. okay. One thing I want to see, Jody, is uh, say a year from today is uh, an update report. Uh, how beneficial, and I hope to give you an A plus, but uh, how beneficial that OC that has been in attracting industry yeah. and what industry has came into county uh, strictly because of OCDA. Yeah. Okay? Okay. okay. I'm going to look myself, so. Well, okay. and here's the thing. If we're not out promoting it, nobody is. If you're not, or so we need... We're the, and that is very true. We and have that's another conversation, but we are the only ones yeah, uh, spending money and promoting property for industrial development in Ohio County. And that shouldn't necessarily be the case with so far it is, but we will... That and that's the only way we're going to grow. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a good industrial park. Yeah. And yes, we, we need to. We, we need, need to maximize to on it. So. Yeah, no, and uh, yes. Cam. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Fine. No. I just kind of like to do more of a half and half kind of starting off. Yep. No.
maybe look at the other the other stuff you want to do here later on in here. But, but we do need a website. Okay. Thank you, Jody. Uh, I have. A, I want to make an appointment to the airport board at this time. Uh, four year, three, three year term. Mm -hmm. Three year term for Chris Fuller. Uh, yeah, but uh, he. We're adding him to the airport board for a three year term. Um. So go ahead and roll call. Johnston. Yes. Town. Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Um, now we have a uh, presentation from the airport board, as a matter of fact. Um, I do apologize. I created a PowerPoint and didn't get it to Miranda in time, so I'm sorry. But you do have printouts. Um, we've got those up there, so you can kind of look along with that. Um, we just wanted to kind of update you guys on some of the things that we've got going on currently with the airport, some of the projects that we're currently doing, and then kind of let you know the process of one of the main projects that we would like to focus on um, in, the, in the coming months. Um, so I just kind of went through some things, obviously, about why the airport is important, um, just to kind of remind, I know you all know the airport is important, but it's always good to, to kind of look at that. Um, so obviously having a functional airport that can support jet traffic um, is a great thing. Our airport, our runway is 5,000 feet long, uh, which is the length that you need to be able to have jet traffic come in. Um, so that's very important, especially when speaking of economic development and things like that. Jody was really excited when I kind of explained to her what that meant and, and how that can um, help it aid in you know, future businesses coming to the air, or excuse me, coming to the area, uh, coming to Ohio County. Um, oftentimes, whenever company CEOs or government officials visit Ohio County, the airport is their very first stop. So that's their first impression of Ohio County. Um, whether it's the governor, whether it's a CEO of you know one of our larger industries that we have here, one of our companies, um, you know that's that's their kind of their front door to Ohio County is there at the airport. So that's one of the reasons to me why we definitely want to continue to you know strive to make it the best that it can be. Um, Currently, Ohio County lacks sufficient access to rail. We don't have a river port um, for access, river port access for supplying goods. So, um, focusing on our interstate and then focusing on air transportation is a huge way to help move goods and services in our area, in and out of our area. And then, um, for those of you who don't know, the aviation career field is absolutely booming right now. Um, over the next 20 years, there's a, a huge, huge projected shortage, several, several, like 20, 30,000 pilot and mechanic shortage um, that they're expecting to have over the next several years. So uh, it's a great career path for a lot of our youth. Um, we've gotten, I know Mark Rowe, who's on our board, has been really um, involved in the class that they've got started at the high school now. So we're, we're really trying to kind of promote that as a great career field to some of our younger, um, our younger people. So right now for our current projects that we have underway, um, our runway lighting system has been kind of going bad over the last several years. Um, we're running electricity into the ground, our electric bill is kind of crazy, um, and our lights are going out, you know, every couple of months we're having to replace runway lights. Um, so the FAA has agreed to do a, a new lighting project, so we're going to be getting brand new LED lights all around the runway and taxiways, and we're also going to be replacing our beacon, which we've had to work on several times over the last six months. Um, and then we also are doing a project called the Airport Layout Plan. Basically, that's just a project that FAA does with every general aviation airport every 10 years. They kind of look at your airport, what do you have, and what do you want to have? You kind of get to lay out your projects for the next several years. What are some things that you think you know, based on what's going on right now, what do you think you need? What are some projects you'd like to see done? And then they also look at all of the data as far as instructions go. So there's all these, you know, lots of surveying that has to go on. Uh, we actually have surveyors that are going to be out there tomorrow morning looking at instructions around the runway, looking at the safety zones and things like that, making sure trees haven't grown so tall that they're in the path if an airplane were to come in and land, you know, on an instrument approach, which means, you know, they may not be able to see very well, maybe cloudy or foggy or something like that. If there's an obstruction in the way that they don't know about, then obviously that's a huge safety hazard. So, um, so that's going on. Um, next week we actually have um, the state, the Kentucky Department of Aviation, has fully funded um, a project to correct. It's called a runway profile correction. 
So basically we had a small dip in one of the ends of our runway. Um, it was most noticed by Governor Bevin when he came to Ohio County several months ago um, and his turbo plane kind of bottomed out at, at one point in our runway. Um, so the state is, I know that's not what we want, so the state's, you know, paid for them to come in and they're actually doing um, an experimental thing where they're injecting something into the asphalt to kind of plump it back up. So that's going to be going on next week. And then, of course, we always have ongoing public relations things that we're doing. Um, we had our Kentucky Aviation Association conference back in September that I was at and talking with the state officials and things like that kind of, kind of promote the airport. Yeah. And, yes, we had our Young Eagles event back in May. Um, I think I've talked about that a couple of times. We flew over 100, uh, 100 kids between the ages of 8 and 17 during that event. Um, we're hoping to do more events like that, um, make that for sure a yearly thing where we have more people coming in and seeing what we've got going on at the airport and getting more involved. Um, so for the airport needs, the number one thing, and this is going to be one of the things we're going to kind of focus on tonight, but our number one need right now is tea hangers. So for those of you who aren't super aware of what a tea hanger is, it's basically a long row of, um, it's a big building, it looked, they keep calling it a pole barn. Uh, but it's a, it's a big metal building, and it has several tea hangers, kind of like a storage unit for airplanes. So, you know, if you had an airplane, then you could rent one of the tea hangers. Um, you'd get a key to it, and you could, you know, come and move your airplane in and out as you please. There's no other airplanes in there. It's kind of your own, you know, your own use. Um, right now, we have 10 tea hangers currently in Ohio County, and um, we've, I've got a waiting list of 12 people that, that want to base their airplanes at, at our airport. So it's definitely a huge need for us. Um, we also need jet fuel. Uh, when the governor was here back in, I guess it was maybe February or March that he was here, um, unfortunately he wasn't able to get fuel at our airport because our jet tank has been decommissioned a couple of years ago. So that's something that we're in need of is a jet fuel tank and then obviously the fuel to go in it, um, system for managing fuel, uh, all those kinds of things that go along with that. Uh, we need additional ramp space and tie down space. Right now we only have three places for people to tie down their airplanes. If someone were to come in, they wanted to come in for one of our concerts or something like that for the weekend, there's only so much space we have for them to park their airplanes and leave it for a day or two or even just the afternoon. Um, we need a new terminal building. Our terminal building is almost 35 years old. It is um, settling quite a bit. There's lots of huge cracks in the floor. Um, it's it's a, a building that needs to be updated and uh, and, and redone. It's also considered an obstruction right now. It's, it's kind of been grandfathered in, but because of its proximity to the runway and the height of the building, um, per FAA uh, regulations, it's, it's too close to the runway for the height. So uh, when we do get a new terminal building, it'll be pushed back some. Um, and then we always need, you know, we, we'd like to see infrastructure uh, to support cargo flights, on-demand cargo flights, which will be huge for industries and businesses that want to come to Ohio County. Um, and passenger charter flights. Uh, parallel taxiway, something that would help with safety. And then, of course, my favorite that I would love to see is an airport manager to manage daily operations, building maintenance, groundskeeping, etc., so that I don't have to spend three and a half hours of my snow day fixing a busted pipe. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said fixing, because Mark Rowe did the fixing. I did the supervising. Um, but when things go wrong at the airport right now, we don't have anyone that is their job necessarily to take care of that. So a lot of that ends up falling on volunteer board members, which we are happy to do because we love our airport, but we don't always have the time for it. Um, and when we do, a lot of times we're having to sacrifice big chunks of time from whether it's our jobs or our families or whatnot. Um, so I, I just kind of laid out how tea hanger revenue uh, would help to generate um, income. So obviously, Revenue, that's going to help go towards things personally, uh, a jet fuel tank and fuel. Um, jet fuel sales are going to generate more air traffic in Ohio County. So when we have jet fuel, there's going to be helicopters. Um, the EMS helicopters that come, currently right now they have to fly to Owensboro to fuel up before they can come. So if there's a, a helicopter sitting anywhere close to here and they have to come to Ohio County to get a patient to take them to Louisville or wherever, they can't come to our airport and fuel up and get the passenger to go. So, um, so, but that's going to generate more air traffic. Um, obviously, jets will stop in more often if they know we have fuel available that they can purchase. Um, more air traffic is going to help generate more businesses in Ohio County. More business generates more tax revenue. You all know how that works. Um, and then the larger our tax revenue is, then the more help we're going to have assisting uh, to fund the additional needs of the airport. Um, base aircraft is actually a pretty big deal when it comes to the 
FAA. So based on aircraft is how many airplanes you have that say their home is Ohio County Airport. That's where they stay most of the time. Um, when the FAA looks at your airport and they kind of categorize it, that's what they look at. Their number one thing they look at is based aircraft. So they want to see how many airplanes do you have that are currently using that airport as their home. And that the more based aircraft you have, the more funding that you get from the FAA. So right now, we have $750,000 in grant money from the Kentucky Department of Aviation. That grant money was intended to be for a T-hanger project. Um, when the state and the FAA and a bunch of us sat down, and Judge Johnson was there this summer, we sat down in a meeting and we discussed several things that we needed. Um, the lighting project and the T-hanger project were the two main things. The FAA decided to take the lighting project and the state decided to take the T-hanger project. Uh, what we didn't anticipate at the time was the astronomical construction costs. So when they funded us for $750,000, the intention was for that to fully fund a whole row of tea hangers, eight to 10 tea hangers. Um, unfortunately, as construction bids, or not bids, but estimates have come in based on other airports in the area uh, that have done similar construction, it's looking like for even for just eight tea hangers, it's looking like it's going to be more about a million dollars than seven hundred fifty thousand. So obviously, because of that, there's a difference. Um, if we do eight tea hangers, the difference is about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If we do ten tea hangers, it's four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that's a pretty big difference. So at this point, um, obviously, the KDA knows that no county government's going to be like, here's $400,000 to, you know, go build some tea hangers. If, if you all had that kind of money, we'd, we, you know, be just thrilled. But um, nobody does. So basically what they're asking for is what, what does our local government value? What can we put in as an investment towards the airport? And um, any, any contribution that can be made from the local airport or from the local government is going to be seen as, um, as a, a, a big you know, thumbs up to the KDA because they're going to see that our local government is invested in our airport. And that is going to prompt them to be able to put in more funding from their end uh, to help fund the project. So if you'll see on the bottom of page three, I kind of have laid out a little bit just kind of a comparison. Um, for T hangers and an airplane. So we know that currently the fiscal court has a remaining allocation of about 84,000 in the coal severance money that was set aside for airport equipment. And the original intent of that was to purchase an airplane for the airport, which was a great idea. Um, it was a necessity, something that we needed at the time because we didn't have an airplane for construction or for rental purposes. So me as a pilot, if I wanted to go fly, I didn't have an airplane that I could go out to the airport and rent and fly when you know I wanted to or needed to. Um, but we do have that now because we have Eagle Flight Academy out there and we have right now three airplanes that you can rent or use for instruction, um, I think getting ready to be four. So the airplane is no longer a necessity. Um, so that's, that's kind of why the board has kind of come together and we would really like to see this money used to go towards the T-Hanger project. So if you look on there, you can kind of see, you know, the difference in, in what, what that money is going to go towards when you get T-Hangers. Um, if we were to use that money and it were to fully fund the, the T or they were to fully fund the T hanger project from the KDA side, um, that's going to add to our current revenue by at least twelve thousand dollars a year right off the bat. Uh, like I said earlier, we have twelve people that are currently on a waiting list that want to base their aircraft at the Ohio County Airport. So we're not going to have any problem finding people to put their airplanes in the T hangers. Um, and then, as I also said earlier, with more base aircraft, um, we'll have we'll sell more fuel. We'll produce more income and then we'll also be eligible for additional grant money from the FAA and the state. As far as the airplane goes, um, the airplane costs money. There's maintenance, you have to do annual inspections. Um, of course, if something breaks, something goes wrong, you all know the same with your vehicles. Every time something goes wrong, you have to pay somebody to fix it. Um, so those, those things cost money. Um, you have to pay for insurance. Um, I also don't have a hanger to put it in right now because, as I said, all of our T hangers are currently taken. Um, and if we did put it in one of our tea hangers, if we had an open one come open, then we would lose the rent money that we were currently getting from that tea hanger. Um, as I said, we currently have three airplanes through Eagle Flight Academy that you can use for rental and instruction, so that's no longer a necessity. Um, and also, as far as the airplane is concerned, um, with all volunteer board members, there's, there's no one to kind of be in charge of it right now. Um, 
it's, it's hard to have someone that would be responsible for it. Even if we use one of our current FBOs, um, our mechanic or our flight instructor, um, you know, they could possibly kind of take care of it, but they wouldn't be paying for all of the other fees and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into keeping up and maintaining that. And because of the fact that it's not a need, then uh, the board just kind of feels like this money could be better spent elsewhere. Um, so in closing, we are so, so thankful for you guys. You guys have always been super supportive of the airport, and we see that, and we appreciate that. Um, I, you know, I've got the best board that I could ever ask for. Um, we've had great board members in the past. We have great board members now. Um, everybody is out there pitching in. Like I said, Mark Rowe was out there helping fix a, a leaky faucet today or, or a, a leaky spigot. And, um, you know, we're they're out there. Marty's out there helping put a wind socks up and you know everybody's just kind of pitching in and doing what they can and um, we, we really want to see our airport grow but um, just to kind of be specific what we're basically what we're requesting uh, from the airport board is for the fiscal court to allow us to use that current airport allocation that we have the eighty four thousand dollars and any other discretionary funds um, that would you know could be afforded to the airport uh, for the current needs specifically the t-hanger project uh, that's going to help generate income with, for the airport rather than cost I'll make a motion to change that. Have y'all paid back the money that we allowed for the fuel? We have not, no. We we don't have the income to 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 pay any anybody back currently. I mean that that's why we need the T hanger project. Because we need more, we've got to have more revenue. We don't have the income to, we barely pay the bills right now. And that was the first get money that was to be paid back. The, 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 the second one wasn't to be paid back, but the first one was, yeah. Well, I'd make a motion to change that from the, the money set aside for the air, airplane to be built to go towards T-8, 84000 Emily, how many uh, tea hangers uh, creates the revenue of twelve thousand dollars a year? Well, it, I base that off of about eight. Eight. And it would just be depending on what we set our rent as. What's it cost to build those? Uh, well, for eight tea hangers, the estimates are coming in right about a million dollars. You know, uh, I don't believe. I mean, I believe what you said. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just can't believe that there's not a contractor in the area, maybe somebody like Lambert Pole Barns or like yeah. uh, others, that when that thing actually went to bed, I can't. I just believe that they could do a lot well, cheaper. The, and and they, they may. The, the problem is when you're doing um, for the grant. When you're doing it for with grant money, there's especially with the FAA. There's a, lots of regulations that things have we to be. Of course, we have an engineering firm that we use that has to design everything and. Everything has to be made to specifications. There's geological surveys that they have to do to make sure there's not endangered turtles living somewhere near it. I mean, it's, I know it's- We run the edge of the fire department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think back in the fire department, just engineering cost was like $100,000. Just because they, they got to have to go through all that. Right. Exactly. It takes just, contractors to get Right. Yeah, it's got to be something that that it was built, that you know that guy was building it right? Yeah. Be out there around there. If, uh, if you, can a, a contractor like to say, like what Judge has alluded to, like Lambert's, uh, can a, uh, a company like that jump through all the loopholes that the uh, federal government requires? I'm, I'm not sure, to be quite honest. Um, from I mean, what I, I understand, a lot of times there's just, there's certain contractors that, that a lot of times get those bids. I don't yeah. remember exactly how the FAA it's, it's like us. FAA our requires that any contractor that's building T hangers, terminal, anything to do with the airport has ex prior experience for so many years mm -hmm. of building airport facilities. And the only way that they can get joke. that is to subcontract no. under joke. a current FAA contractor to get that time in. You remember so how we had the issue with Crider? He wasn't on the state approved bid list for yeah. contracting for the county under the state. They have the same regulations for grants. Yeah, but I understand that's not rocket science. It's building but hangers. No, I mean, I, I know these people could do it. They're all like, we can go out there and build a pole barn. 
Yeah. Well, maybe not that, but yeah, I, I yeah. could see where that. A lot uh, less for sure. But yeah. Unfortunately, I, I checked with some contractors we deal with who got into fabrication, and they didn't know of any of this area that were qualified. Yeah. And, and then I know that the regulations. If it's a federal job, it has to be a certain amount of prevailing wage, also, which contributes to the increase as well. I understand that, but yeah. but I I just I, I I never have understood government when it comes to if if anybody could go out there and they build the building according to the specs, they got an inspector from the federal government that comes out and say, "Yep, that's what we've done right." I don't understand why that it uh, you know why all the uh, we agree. We're right yeah, with you. But I understand what you're saying. I certainly do. How much do you rent your tea hangers for right now? Currently, uh, they rent for $100, which has been doubled in the past two years. So, so we, yeah. And that's cheap compared to a lot in the right, area. Right. So that's why, you know, when we get some new ones built, then, you know, we'll probably raise our rent just a little bit and kind of help. Yeah, I mean, you got people waiting well, on the waiting people, list. I was going to say, people yeah. are coming. So yeah. it's, it's, you know. If you travel around, there's, if you've been to, Breckenridge County, they got a brand new airport. Mulebar County got a new airport. Bangkok's got a nice one. Ours will do some upgrades. Yeah. Several small airports similar in size to ours. So about 50 mile radius. So. Now getting the 84,000 switched over to the T hangers. I mean, what do you think that's going to help you on? You don't really know what it's going to do for you on the grant. I don't know for sure, um, but I can tell you I think it's going to go a long way. Yeah. Um, I think when, and I honestly will probably be on the phone with them tomorrow um, because their next round of funding came in in November for the contract department of aviation. So they're kind of at this point where they've got their next round of money and they're kind of waiting to see what we're able to get from our, our local government. And then um, I think when they see a local contribution like that, they're going to, I think they're going to fund it. I think all we got to do is send paperwork up there saying we reline out on what it was going to be. How much trouble would, would it be for you guys paperwork. to uh, that right, put a, put it out to bid? And how I'm just curious to see how much uh, uh, how much the uh, price would come in. I'd say like eight hangers or ten or whatever. I, don't, I wouldn't even begin to know how to bid that. Oh, we don't have to do it. It's almost like our hands are tied. We have to go through an engineering firm. Yeah. Oh, you do. There's our engineering firms that work directly with airports in the state. Yeah. I know we deal with it constantly with the yeah. state. So and they've got people that's going to do the work, aren't they? Larry, when they were building the, the McHenry Fire Department, they were the first couple of bids that was submitted by engineering firms. You know, they they told them they only had an X amount of dollars by the grant, and they wanted to use that money to. They kicked out. It was one like four hundred thousand dollars higher, and they said we can't. You know, so they it was like several revisions for where they got it down, but yeah. by that time they they ate up a they ate up the savings. Well, they ate up a big engineering yeah uh, bill, yeah. Yeah. but it was required by the because it's federal grant. Yeah, right. But if we if we had you know five hundred thousand dollars of our own money, we could probably go yeah. out there and as long as it met right. FAA regulations of where it was placed and how tall it was and things like that. Mm -hmm then it'd be fine. But when you're using grant money, then that ties you to a whole lot of yeah. different If issues. getting somebody on a list, I've been able to do that many times. It takes some doing. But we've been able to get people on the uh, transportation approved uh, contractor's list. Uh, we got bigger staff and ward on the approved uh, engineering list. And so, you know, I, I believe that w it might be a step. But if we had a contractor that could do this thing for a third that price, or half, I think it'd be worth trying to get them on the list. I don't think the grant money is going to wait for all of that to mm -hmm. take place. To be well, yeah, they're they're basically <coughs> waiting to hear you know if we're going to be able to contribute anything, and they're going to be making a decision on this pretty quickly. So no. if we wait to try to do something like that, you know, and I honestly don't see that being something that's probably going to happen just yeah. from. Yeah. And, and seeing, you know, talk mm -hmm. to other people at other airports and, and what's the, going on. And the wheels of government grind slowly, yeah. don't they? So. But like I said, we've done these things a lot of times and saved a lot of money. Oh, I could understand the saving is just a question about the timetable now. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just going to go ahead and roll call it. If we do this, we won't get our money back. I'm going to vote no because uh, it, one that got the funding in there for that purpose, and we thought it was a need for many years, uh, you know, to have a rental plane there that belongs <coughs> under control. But that's okay. Go ahead, rest on. Kim? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, We're just moving it from buying an airplane to yeah, the hand, to, to project, hand. so they can show our support, so they can get more federal uh, support. Hopefully, yep. get it completely. Well, rent, I, I, and I then look we at can use rent to buy the airplane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we can yeah. use rent to do a lot of things that we need done. We have a long list yeah. of things that need to be done. We just don't have the money to do it. So yeah. Would there be additional funding, like if we bought an airplane, would there be additional funding to maintain it? No, I mean, there's people that do it. The the rental. The the rental fee should cover the the insurance and the the uh, maintenance and annual and all that. That's what that's what the uh, goal would have been. Uh, that was the goal. I just didn't. I, the research I've done, I didn't think that was the Well, it, it might, and it, we might break even, but I don't. I don't think we would make and much money on it. Who's they going to have take care of it? Like, right. who's going to do the rentals? Who's going to do the because of course, anytime if you came out and said you wanted to rent the airplane, I've got to make sure you got a you got a yeah. current pilot's license and a current medical certificate that you're in good standing with the FAA, yeah. that you're not going to steal my airplane. And uh, yeah, I, I understand all that. I would have thought the FBO, but I don't know. Well, uh, that's, and that's what he does. That's why you know Eagle Flight Academy. He has his airplanes, and, and he does all of that with his airplanes. But he makes 100 percent of the revenue off yeah. of them as well. So you know. Uh, yeah. I think when that stays but it, but it is drumming up the business for yeah. the rental. Yeah. Plus I'm, he's providing I, three. I'm gonna vote yes because it uh, it generates much needed revenue for the airport, so yes. Larry? Yes. More of you. No. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes. Yes. At motion carries. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Um Justin has asked us first to go into a short closed session uh, under KRS Chapter One, Section C. This has to do with uh, uh, possible uh, litigation. We shall return. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor, sit aye. down and we'll get back to bar. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Holds like that. We're back in open session. And for the record, we conducted no business while we was in closed session. And we only talked about this one issue. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Joe Barnes to make a motion on that behalf. We'll make the motion, but I'm going to let Justin read it off there. Yeah, we, we just make the motion to uh, give the discretion yes. to the Occupational Tax and Judge Executive uh, Office in um, resolving an ongoing dispute within that office and a taxpayer. Uh, occupational tax were limited in what we can say because of the confidential nature and their profits uh, and those things um, so that's that's kind of what our motion would be at this time to give the discretion to the occupational tax and judge executive office to resolve this I'll second a motion second is there further discussion being not all in favor say aye, aye. Uh, opposed like sign Motion carries. Okay. Um, now I've got two uh, personnel things here. Two people we want to hire, and I'll put the name up. The first one is Chris. We discussed uh, the last meeting, and we've run the ads and done all the things that the court asks us to do. Put up the name of Christina Carpenter as administrative assistant, uh, full time. At fourteen dollars and eighty-seven cents, and this is at OCDA, and it is in the budget. Effective, Effective uh, eleven thirteen nineteen, and uh, roll call that. Johnston. Yes. Kim. Yes. Morfield. Yes. Small. Yes. 
Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Okay. And the next, Judge. yes. You didn't get a second on that, did you? Yeah. Oh, no, we don't, we don't on hiring. And the next one's at the road department. And it is uh, Richard uh, Schaefer as equipment operator uh, at $16.09 an hour, uh, effective 11 17. Uh, that's, I guess that's it, full time. And it is in the budget, it's for an open position. So we'll call that. Johnson? Yes. Can? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Barnes? Yes. yes. Okay, that's done. Um, um, next to committee reports, I know we have at least two. Um, we had a, uh, well, we have about three at least. Um, we uh, met with the road department this afternoon and uh, we discussed some equipment. And I believe, Joe, you have that piece of equipment there. Yeah, we're looking at, we need to get a uh, new mow trim. We've had two older mow trims that's been given fits over the years. Over. Uh, actually, about five years ago, we the we built a deck on one. We didn't even know if it was the same to. Can, just like. Uh, but I don't know. It's on stage no. bid. Tractor and the, the motor in more horsepower for one hundred thirty-seven thousand. And one of the trimmer comes for no new Yeah, I remember the new home. We would have to seek a loan. But uh, do we want to actually look into our three different loaning units? Yeah, we're looking at all three. Loaning. Do we want to come back and actually make the motion in, or just make the motion on whoever gives us the best rate? I'd say who gives the best rate, because it could be gone if we don't hurry up and close it. There's, there's one that's on state bid, and they have it in stock. And you know how it is with state bid on actually being able to get it. The spray truck we waited for ever. Yeah. And uh, road foreman said this is the, the most needed out there, and we've been actually, you know, getting behind on our motor. Um, yeah. Do we need? Or is it just no even the motor? So, well, so our motor's gonna be so right. different ones. That's right. what I was asking. We need a motor. Yeah. Did you get so it? Where, uh, where's it going from? Uh, right. It was actually the late delivery. Right. We have to go get it. I don't know. They probably don't take it. Right. They probably don't. Both of them down. And None the of the tractors will support those. Mm -hmm. No, the, the one that's got the side mowers is smaller. <coughs> so do we need them, too? Did you make that in the motion? Did you make it in the motion? To uh, purchase from Ryan? No, I Do I have a second? I second it. Second, but Larry Morphew. Dan, you've got a person to purchase. And for the yeah. treasurer to write a check. Yes. Authorized treasurer. You got it. <laughs> but actually, yeah, whatever term comes out the best. Yes. Because the years and the interest will vary. Yeah. That's and uh, those ended up checking is uh, First United Bank, which carries some of us local. Yeah. 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 Ye
um, Bluegrass Museum plaque committee that had met. That that was Larry Murphy and I actually. <laughs> and uh, go ahead and tell them what we got in mind, Larry. Uh, putting the plaque up. But this court is the one that approved and the museum to be built. Yeah, and we'd get prices and everything and and all that. Do you want to put that in motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. And I'll second yeah. it. Any more discussion? Can I, I make info I'll say it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I get the info on it? Put a plaque on the museum, or on the museum grounds that this fiscal court that we're in now is, is the one that built it. Today? Hmm? Is this what they met on today? Oh, I don't know. No, that, yeah, that's what they met on, but I don't know what they'd come up with. It's embarrassing. Who's, who's on that committee? Jason and the people, other people I see in the neighborhood. Jason and Kenny, and then animal, animal shelter guy, and the, and the uh, uh, Humane Society. Right? <laughs> Go ahead and uh, roll call that. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphy? Yes. Small? <clears throat> yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. And remind us to actually call like the sign shop over here and see the trophy house. Uh, okay, I, was there any other committees, Matt? Uh, and being, the, uh, being no more committees has a report, uh, we'll go for the magistrate's uh, comment. Okay. Um, I got a comment. Are you going to go through? Yeah. Uh, Sam? Yeah. No, Jay? Okay. Uh, just going to update everybody on the uh, one of the projects that we did at the uh, that there were so many that we did not have enough to go to Rockport Bow Ramp. We finished the repairs to all the ramp. Actually, it worked out even better. We were shooting to widen it and repair some defects, but we actually tore the section out and the old ramp that was weathered and, and it got really thin and broke up and poured it all new. And it actually ended up, we saved a little bit more money that way. But, uh, it's all done. We even straightened it and did some bank repairs. So we still have a little bit more on that project to do, but the the ramp is complete in that regard. The the biggest thing is trying to get done for the bad weather and you know the river break and elevation. Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. They did a good job. Good deal, Larry. No, Larry. I don't have anything. Um, I got two things. Uh, one first one. I want to uh, tell you that we've got someone from Congressman Comer's here, office here, and he will be trying to t catch you and talk to you a little bit after the meeting, one-on-one, -on -one there. But uh, you're really proud you're here. Thank you for coming. Um, what was the other thing I had? Oh. Yeah, that's it. The other one is uh, the inauguration day it's on the 10th, which will be our next court meeting. And uh, I know that I'm going, and maybe some of you have indicated you may go. So we'd like to change our next court meeting. We'll have it on the 17th. Uh, so that will be our, uh, that was the other thing I had. 17th at 5 o'clock? Yes. Yes. Is that okay with everybody? If not, we could probably find another day, but it can't be the 10th. Just delaying it a week? Yes. Yes. Huh? It'll be on Tuesday then, Doug. Yes, sir. Does anybody in the audience have anything for the good of the body? Yes, Mr. Bucket. Chief. Chief, I mean. Chief Bucket. Yes, sir. I'm going to hand this to y'all. I've only got one copy. Sorry. Uh, I know that the mayor spoke to you. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chief Bucket, Fire Chief here in Hartford. Um, we've got a situation. Um, we had to tank our uh, tanker out of service due to frame rusting out and becoming very unsafe for us to respond to emergencies. 
Um, we've uh, milked it about as long as we can. Um, we have found a used tanker up in Pennsylvania. Um, those of you who don't know, I'm actually in the fire truck selling business. This has nothing to do with me or my company. Uh, two things that people don't get rid of are tankers and fire trucks. They usually keep them until they're wore out. Um, just so happened we found one that is in good shape. It's a 1992 model, and the cost of it is 89000 um, I spoke to the mayor today and told him I was going to come to you all tonight to see if I could get some assistance. Um, the numbers that I'm needing tonight are a down payment to hold the truck of $8,900 for a month or two until we can get our finances in order and our loan. Uh, if we could split this uh, cost of this unit between the court and and the city um, for the next five, you know, however you all would like to do it. You know, I know you can't come up with a lump sum of forty-four thousand five hundred tonight, and I'm not asking you to. Um, if you can do the eighty-nine hundred tonight, where I can put a down payment on the truck and hold it, uh, <coughs> we get a five-year loan. The mayor's looking at a loan for grad, uh, some other places, but. If y'all could you know, split it out over five years, I think that's $7,120 over the next five years. Uh, and we wouldn't have that payment starting up until this time next year. Uh, what about some grant money? Can anything be applied for while well, you're in that paying for That it? one grant loan that he's looking at is like a 30% <coughs> grant. In the event that he gets that one, that in turn would lower the part that I'm asking for y'all from y'all tonight. Uh, as you said about the tractor a while ago, these don't last very long. Um, there's a department next door to them where this department's located that's wanting to buy it. And they're in the same situation. They're trying to get the funding. Yeah. So it's, it's first come, first serve. What year was the tanker that y'all took out of the <coughs> Gosh, what was it, Josh? Or what year was that <coughs> old? Uh, Who's it cheap? 89. It was what we've done. We were worried about the, you know, that one rusted out. This well, one was kept three years. the reason is that, that one had two million miles on it. What it was was a milk truck. Uh, that tank that was on the truck that we had was mainly a water hauler. Um, we put that body on three different chassis. Not only was the frame rusting out, the, the brackets that hold that tank were all rusted. We welded them and repaired them, welded them and repaired them. So it was steel. Yeah. And uh, the uh, is this stainless? Yeah, it's the body stainless steel. So in the event that you know that chassis ever wants to go down, we've got a good body. Um, I've got a coworker that sells the Pierce fire trucks up in that area, and I asked him about this department, and he said, Don't "You won't go wrong. It's a it's a very well kept department. They take care of their stuff." Uh, and the one benefit with this truck over our last truck, we can actually fight fire with this one. Uh, if you notice the hoses coming right. off the side, and which will help our ISO points also. You know, in the event that we have a pumper go down, we can respond this one directly out on a house fire. Uh, what model is it? What year? Pardon? What no. year model is it? 92. I mean, yeah, I would love to buy a brand new one. Right. But right. in four years, I've got to buy a pumper. And a brand that new needs one. That to be a newer. And a brand new one of that, uh, like that, would run how much? About $300,000. Yeah. How many miles is on this one? Twenty-five thousand. Y'all have, have to go get it, or will they deliver it? I would probably just go get it. Uh, the guy that I asked about it, he said you could hop in it and drive it halfway across the country. I have to worry about it. Uh, the cost to haul one, I just hauled one into Bowling Green the other day. It was five thousand dollars. Yeah. So I know somebody goes truck picks frame, up pothole patchers. He probably did. The truck frame now it's still right. Yes. Yeah, I know a guy went and picked up pothole patchers. I was yeah. just kind of worried yeah, about salt. That salt. was my concern. That's why I had an outside have source to look at it. Everything right. was there's about no to get it going. Other than you know the normal little uh, uh, the pothole patch or something. Yeah. Both of them are just one. One and then the other. I would be pushing for it. David, I went on a road trip. We've had enough trucks with enough problems. And they had uh, potholes. And this one goes along with the county. It's not just for Hartford. I mean, it's probably it's been every good. district in the county. I just don't We've always had it. <laughs> not every department in the county has a tanker. You know, how do you do that? <laughs> uh, I mean, you have a tanker. You can't see a pothole. I can't really. a small one. Cromwell has a small one. Centertown actually has a good one. Uh, but it's not just Hartford. 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 It's not
if somebody can, not everybody can drive a tanker. What you're saying, hypothetically, if your magistrate and I were to ever discretionary funds come up with eighty nine hundred dollars, yes, this thing would happen. Yes. And no, without a commitment for anything else from the court at this time. Well, and the half, the forty-four thousand five hundred is what I'm asking for. I don't need the whole forty-four thousand five hundred right now. All I need is the eighty-nine hundred for the down payment, and then split the remainder of that, which I think, if I done my math right, seven thousand one hundred twenty over the next five years. So seven thousand dollars a year over the next five years, uh, just to help make our loan payment. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. I think yeah, that, I know you can't come up with forty five thousand. Have y'all got uh, y'all got another truck financed now or yes, our uh, our main pumper out of station one here, it's still financed. We've got four years left on it. When that's paid off, that's when I'm gonna buy another new pump. I'd say Sam and Judge are in for a dif difficult situ uh, situation here. Well, that's why I wanted to come and talk to all of you rather than one at a time because it, it covers every all of y'all's districts. It's been in Fordsville, my county in Centertown. It goes. It's yeah. that truck may go where nothing else goes. You know, they just need water. So, you know, they might not need personnel. They need water, and that, we we face that all over our hydrant system. My issue is, you know, I'd really like to know we was getting some grant money to go to help it. Well, we don't know anything like you about said, that. The, the, the state bid. You know, if I, if I wait another week to for that loan or however long that loan takes, I'm not sure. If in the event that we do get that, then that 7,120 years going to drop. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't do that math, but you know, if, if we're putting in seven and, and the city's putting in seven to, to make this payment, we end up getting a 30% funds from that. That'll go towards that loan and drop the amount. About 2,000 of it in the yeah, yeah, the, the, the amount that I ask you about is the worst case scenario. The tanker that went out of commission was stationed here in the city. Yes. But it. It, it yeah, we just don't have the room food. nor the manpower out in Station 2 to right. make sure that it goes. It stays here to make sure that somebody can roll it. Judge, are you and Sam willing to up to 89? Uh, well, I am if uh, Sam is. Be 45. I mean, 44, 50. Yeah, it's the, the commitment down the road is the... Yeah. Which it won't be 40, it'll be 37, you, right? Because you're taking 89 off of it. You, you, said, you said how much a year? 75? Yes, 70, for five years? That's 37. That's deducting the 89 off. Right. And then leaving 7,000 so for the county of course will be 37. Which I don't need that until. No, start that, alone that, now, 125. Your truck is, it can't be you sold for anything. We sold it for 1500 bucks. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, we can't. It actually tore up on some house fire on fourteen fourteen, and the mechanic crawled up under it, and he's like, "Oh my God, y'all are riding a death trap." And it's not worth getting somebody hurt over to. Probably won't be able to get much out of it. We got fifteen hundred out of it. Sanford Farms bought it for the tank. That's that's you know I know it's it's emergency purchase. Uh, you know I don't know how else to present it to you. I, I've tried to run numbers and. Yeah, we'd love to buy a new one, but I'm not a fool either. You know, that's two hundred fifty three thousand dollars. So, mm -hmm. But we the city have. gonna throw any in for Yeah, it's gonna have to be half. No, I mean like half. on the down. But are they paying half the down payment? No, no, no. Oh. I'm asking for all the down payments. Oh eighty nine that's right. So eighty nine, that's right. Due to you guys are doing due to the time constraints. Yeah. They're not meeting for another two weeks. If I don't do it, then you know, that's two weeks. Well they could have a call meeting. I, I get it. Trust me, I do. Um, what I, I guess the, the, the way it, what I ask you all to look at it is you're giving me half of it, and I'm getting the other half from the city, and, and let me use the 8900 for the down payment. So it, uh, if it was just used in, in our district, I, I wouldn't be bold enough to come and ask you. But you know, it's a it's a county wide truck, kind of like the ladder truck was. So. Mutual aid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have a good mutual aid program in the county. It's, right. It's very, very good. Just, uh, you know, seven times old. Beaver down have a tanker? Oh, sir. So how much did you say the payments would be over? I figured it right. If you give us 8900 
But then that's not figuring in interest. We'll worry about that later. With the, with our, I mean, we still do get some funding in still. I mean, if I get that far, we can worry about the rest. All right. <coughs> 44, 5 minus 89 is 35, 6. And then divide by 5. 71, 20. Yeah. That's what he said. No, well, so, so we could we could commit to that, but we can't speak for the court on the commitment for the rest of it. So how would you be if you don't get the thirty-seven? Was that something that over the course of how many years spread out is the department going to be able to handle it? And our funding's so tight. I mean, it's you know with uh, everything else that we have to buy. I mean, it's just an expensive endeavor on on you know a limited budget. With the gear, and all the mandates now, and the testing, it's just uh, you know, with the news district, we wouldn't be talking about it. But that's for another day. You know, so we can do that on our own then. But that's that's the end. This is now. Uh, and you know, if things change, say the news district passes in a couple of years, well, then y'all are out. That's why I say we just take it as a year by year basis. If uh, you know if we can count on you for this, and then you know maybe you can guarantee me next year, and then if you know if the dues district doesn't pass, and, and uh, which would help everybody involved, not just us, uh, then we can come back and say we don't need your seventy one twenty. So. I just hate to commit to monies that I don't know whether we'll have or right. not. That, that's, my, that's my concern. I keep up with the yeah. on. I know you, you know. We As can. I told the young ladies, Jody, earlier, that yeah. don't know what the situation is going to look like next year because mm -hmm. our revenue is definitely going to be down. And, we that, can, and that's my only. Yeah. We'll, we can look at it in the budget, and, uh, and we can make a motion tonight since Sam and I agreed. And... Uh, so if she can write the check for the 8900 we can do that if I make it happen. But I think what they're saying, we'll have to wait to budget time to say for sure on the other. Is that, am I t here just when right? Did, right? Well, that's my thought. You said it'd be, when would your actually payment start? You said a year, a year from, from now. now? Yeah, most loans that we've checked on is a yearly payment. So, and this is kind of an argument for the due system because you're just one department. You take all of them. What if yeah, Beaver Dam there's, wants? There's other ones. That's, you know, they've got you know, there's too. lots of departments. Yeah, the, that's know, what I'm saying. It's We're, just our size. You know, a lot of these tankers came from grants, mm -hmm. but due to our size, it just we just fall in the area. We just can't get a truck grant. I've tried, 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 tried. Mm -hmm. tried the got like got Mac Henry. Henry. Yeah, we bought the <laughs> we brought Carmelos. They would fall in their grant we sure did. Well, and that's how they the get their truck. And I was noticed last year we bought it. That's kind of what happened here. I, well, I mean, this is, we're not committing any further than our discretionary yeah, funds yeah. for down there. Yeah. And I think it's good of you guys to do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because of this going to be a, uh, for, so Ann can write the check and everything, do you know what the name of the company is? It should be on the top of that. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. The one describing the truck. Okay. I have it, I'll make the. No, it's not on there. It's on this one here. She has oh. it. Okay, it's the good one you got. Name Very top line. Yeah, but it's not getting the. Um, it's actually no name. It, it has a description, but no name. You know they're going to. New England Fire. New England Fire. Okay. 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 Here's motion. Move to approve the Fire Department Fire Insurance Company Fire Insurance Company Make a motion that we authorize Ann to write a check to. The company he just said, yes, New, England Fire. New England Fire, uh, in the amount of $8,900 uh, for a fire tanker truck, and that it come from the, the discretionary accounts 
equally split between first district magistrate and the judge executive's discretionary money. 44.50 and I second it. Good. Okay. Okay. You don't yeah. Make it be, thirds? Yeah, because it's going okay, to be... Okay, make it by thirds. It'll come from the three, uh, his two. Okay. From Joe's two. Okay. It, it gets used a lot in the north. Okay. So that sounds good. And uh, I would be surprised if we don't come up with that payment, but we just can't commit it tonight. You want to vote on this, Judge? Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. If no one else has anything... Can get those pictures back. For the he wants she wants the pictures back. I've already given them to him. Oh, he's got them back. She, he'll give them back to you. That's fine. Uh, if no one else has anything for the good of the body, I'm going to say this. Uh, okay. Oh, you got something, Robert? All right. Yeah. All right. I kind of I guess apologize to everybody because apparently I draw a lot of attention out to my 231 lot. Uh, one. Uh, when I bought the place out there, I bought two different lots there, and you couldn't even see 20 foot into any of them. You know, I gave 30000 for one lot, 120000 for the other ones, you know, uh, over 10000 in cleaning up so far, 2000 in rock. Uh, it probably won't even be open till next year sometime. I'm not storing cars there. Now, by unfortunate coincidence, I put three vehicles out there, which was supposed to be picked up the next day, but we got rain, and then they got stuck there, which nobody was hurt, not one bone was broke. You know, I, I've i been doing this long enough, I got more of a conscience to put a vehicle out there for somebody to see that somebody got hurt in, period. But uh, these are vehicles that, with liability is basically the same as no insurance to a record driver. You know, if, you're, if they're not if they're not the victim or don't have full coverage, we don't get paid. But anyway, uh, which of course, if anybody drove out there, you know that you haven't even been able to see the drive-in. I know I'm 55 years old, and I've never been able to see the drive-in that far. You know, away. You know, so you know I'm. I'm trying hard to clean that up and make it look nice. And like I said, time I get a building put up, and then my impound lot will actually be behind the screen of the driving, and he's putting up a 10-foot metal fence down through there. I told him I'd pay for half, but things is going so slow that for me to leave anything on that lot, I had to put a fence up, and I had to put it up quick because I couldn't even leave a car over. I had three, three of my old cars uh, ciphered the gas was ciphered out you know within within two days you know that just gone so I had to put a fence up quick I'm uh, there's a right of way marker in front of the drive in there's a right of way marker on my property right by the hemp farm I'm behind both of them right of way markers my fence is uh, I know what the state regulations is on impound lots but I'm not storing cars there yet I won't be storing any car there that I don't own. And the cars, like I said, I got my classic car sitting out there right now just because I bought a house across the street and I don't want to leave all my classic cars at my old residence where everybody knows that I'm not there. So, you know, I got, I think, 14 cars out there, probably estimated value, probably $200,000 or better. And, uh, and then, like I said, uh, the cars that's been wrecked that's sitting there have actually already sold to uh, Tracy Hack in, in uh, Morgantown, but I just haven't had time to get them up there. Which the ones that was up like the next, the next to the road where people could see, I did move them, got them off the road after one person said something about it. One person stopped in there and said something about it. I told him, I said, well, nobody got hurt in them. Not one. Just scratches. Uh, I know everybody, you know, the vehicles, I know every one of them personally. The people, you know, they didn't have no problems, you know, with you don't. Yes. You know, with, with, like I said, just under the, just the way it happened, when I put them there, they were supposed to go out the next day, the rain hit, I couldn't get them out. So they sat there for a week or so, which at the time I was clearing out 
the rest of the fence rows and the, and the farm piles and it wasn't a top priority. The only thing that was a top priority to me at the time was trying to clean the rest of it up, try to get the rest of it burnt, which it is right yeah. now. Everything's burnt that's going to be burnt. And, um, you know, now the, the next step is probably between now and next year, try to get a building up and then try to get the, the fence put up behind the building where the cars will be stored. But at this time, they'll be still stored at my other location, the cars that I get, that I tow in. You know, I've done two wrecks where I had the impound, or have them in storage. It's, I said impound, but it's actually storage. It's a storage lot, it's not really an impound lot. But, um, uh, but that's, that's just basically what's going on. If anybody, you know, really wants to know, um, you know, that's what's going on. Uh, it's gonna take some time to get everything done. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to better my company. Uh, you know, I'm not doing anything or trying to do anything to hurt anybody or upset anybody, but nobody said anything to me personally at all about any concerns except for the one guy stopped in and said something about them three cars in the same day they moved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm sure you're going to have something there that the community can be proud of. I know, I know you that well. Because I'm your district. I represent, have, I got, I have, have had two calls and then I saw something on Facebook. It was brought up tonight because we're looking into the, the trash ordinance. Your name or your business name was not mentioned. I just wanted to make sure, but I had talked to David, and I think you have talked to David. All right. And David said that, uh, that you guys could work it out and hear what's going to happen, and it was going to be fine. Do we have concerned people calling out there? I do have concerned people. But if you do what you say you're going to do, that that's fine. I can't stop a business. And if, I was just making sure if something didn't, we did have yeah. something, because I had, I've had people call. Yeah. Two calls, and then I saw some on Facebook. But like you said, it has rain. You probably had to. It looks nice. And I didn't want to use your business name on the air. Because I didn't want Kelp to Kelp me in on them. But uh, David has sure he's talked to you. If you talk to him. And you said you were going to do about this. And about the text. We assume you're going to. Okay. 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 I think she's just going to take. She don't have to have it through the I put it on the credit card. And then it'll be on next month's bill. We worked out a deal okay. yeah. where he got the, you know, the rest of the Design. property line cleaned out and behind oh. the, 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 the front, you know, the wall. You know, and, and like I said, it ain't, it ain't look that good. I've had people show me it ain't look that good in their life, you know. And like I said, I'm 55 years old. I, no, I ain't never seen the driving screen that clear, you know, in my life. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to make a difference. I'm trying to have something to be proud of. And, and somebody would really be stupid to think that I'm going to spend $200,000 to have something look trashy. Mm -hmm. You know what right. I mean? Right. You know, I, I agree. I'm proud of what I do. I'm proud of my business. You know, and I told him, I said, that's a business, we can't do anything about a business. Now, if there were regulations as far as, if you were going to have an impound lot, there were going to be a lot of cars out there. I was just wanting to make sure there was a way that you were going to store them behind the fence. So, well, yeah. when, when, when the fence goes up, it won't be something somebody can see through. It either yeah. be wood or be metal, but like I said, if the, if the man does what he said he's going to do, he's going to put up a 10 foot fence between me and him to try to keep the, the lights from the cars driving down the road from coming in on the people right. watching movies. So, and like I said, that's 10 foot right down at one side. My building will take up probably 40, 50 foot back there. It won't be 20 foot of other fence between me and the hemp barn yeah. to, to box in, you know. That I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to have an eyesore out there. No. I'm, I'm working too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And work well, I mean, we don't want one. I appreciate that. Uh, and I, I believe that, Robert. You, I, I, I know that. I know that you're going to have a nice looking place. I'm going to be you know, proud of. Like I said, it's 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 personal. When I took over this business, it's personal. Yeah. You know, Larry Brown was like a dad to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, anything I would close the business before I'll do anything to hurt the name that he had. Okay. And I will do that. I'll shut her down in a heartbeat before yeah. I would do anything to hurt 
to make the business look bad. I work hard to make sure it don't. Yeah, uh, I know you're going. Anybody go that knows me knows that I ain't right. never been a nice person, but I've really been trying yeah. hard. Yeah. No, you're. Yeah. you're well, I appreciate you coming to the meeting. I can clarify that. So, yeah. if anybody listens tonight, they know kind of what you've already told, David. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm the easiest person in this world to find. So, if anybody has any questions they want to know about, all they have to do is ask. And as I don't know anybody they're going to call. As long as they ask nicely, they'll get a nice response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah that's know, true. That's, that's just basically how it is. I don't want to be pushed. No. Man, I've been working too hard. I won't be left alone. Let me do what I'm going to do, what I got to do. And then after it gets done, if you don't like it, hey, I'll sell it to you. All right. And then I'll move somewhere else. I hope you're successful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Robert. I appreciate your time. We're, yeah, we're, we're proud of what you've done. I don't want to hurt nobody. Well, I'll admit, I had two concerns, and David said he thought I've had phone calls. And he, what he's reassured me, and if, if by the state, if you're going to follow that, then. Well, when, when I when I read some of the posts on, which of course the people that I, I don't even remember who posted, but I did well, see. I, I know. Yeah. But the people that posted this, I actually tried to be friends with them on there so I could read it. I had to yeah. go through somebody else and read it through their phone. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, um, you know, with if if they would let me got out got where I could read them, then I could have a response. You know, mm -hmm. I could have my say. But. Um, you know, that, that wasn't the way it was going to work. But like I said, it's, it's just going to take time. Uh, there will not be any stored cars on that property that I don't own until it gets away from the way And I had to move the ones that's out there right now. I, like I said, I had to move them because I can't deliver them to Morgantown. I can't wait till the blood comes and then try to get that another place. Yeah. Right. And, and the way things have been working, I gotta wait until the time this business is made. But I appreciate it. Appreciate it. If you ever have any concerns about what's going on, you know, call me. I'm happy to talk to you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting's adjourned. See y'all the 17th.